celebration tonight. The church world over today remembers and celebrates St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. A great gift to the church during his time and onwards up to today. But for us, our father and our founder of the Society of Jesus. Today, here in Lusaka, but elsewhere around the world, we also have this opportunity to witness the final commitment of our brothers in the Society of Jesus, Father Elias and Shemunya and Father Terry Mutesha. I know that elsewhere, particularly in South Africa, we also have our companion there, Father Rampe, who's also taking his final vows. It's also possible that elsewhere they are Jesuits who are finally committing themselves for life in this least society of Jesus. So we turn to God with grateful hearts for this great gift of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who is our father and our model of discipleship, who shows us what it means to be imitators of Christ our Lord. We also thank the Lord for the gifts of our brothers, fathers Terry and Shimunya, who also today commit themselves and become true companions of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people goodly. We praise you, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heaven and king, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth, and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. The first reading. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become laughing stock all day long. Everyone mock me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destructions. For the word of the world has become for me a reproach and derisions all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me, there is something like a burning fire. Shut up my bones. I'm aware with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Just and see that the Lord is good. Just and see that the Lord. Oh, 
want and go hungry. But those who seek the Lord lack no praise. seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Amen. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So, therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Good 
Good evening, my brothers and sisters. First of all, a blessed solemnity of St. Ignatius to all of us. My dear brothers and sisters, this evening we have a twin celebration of the solemnity of St. Ignatius of Loyola and the final vows of fathers Elias and Terry. And our readings, I think, are very appropriate for this occasion. In our gospel this evening, we heard that as Jesus is on his way, he's accompanied not only by his disciples, but by great crowds, and he turned and spoke to them. If any man comes to me without hurting his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life too, he cannot be my disciple. Anyone who does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So far, my brothers and sisters, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has been spending time forming his disciples, and especially the twelve, on the implications of journeying with him. But in our Gospel this evening, he turns his attention to the crowds following him. But it seems they were following him because perhaps they were amazed and enthusiastic about his miracles that he performed and also his teaching. They might have been tempted to think that this life with Jesus is easygoing and enjoyable. Now Jesus wants them to realize that following him is a serious business. It doesn't get much harder than that, does it? It seems a strange way to build a religious movement. Most would surely be attracted by the benefits rather than being confronted by the cost. So what are we to say of these hard sayings of Jesus that we heard about in our gospel this evening? Anyone who makes a radical commitment to Jesus we will experience sooner or later that not everybody agrees with the values and the way of life of Jesus. When there is a clash, Jesus tells the would-be disciples, you must have the courage to choose me first, even if that means turning your back on your family. In other words, to hate your family is a way of saying to love Jesus more or to prefer him to your family. This is very interesting because it indicates to us that it is those who are already following Jesus who needed to be taught the nature of true discipleship. These were not people who were antagonistic to Jesus' ministry, but were interested enough to be following him already. But even then, it seems that they had not fully grasped the implication of discipleship. Additionally, this statement would have been enough to make the large crowd uh, grasp in horror. Most of them would have seen criminals carry their crosses on their way to the execution in humiliation and shame. Why would anyone choose that for themselves? This, there was indeed no turning back for that. So Jesus is using this metaphor for saying a final goodbye to all our desires and ambitions if we choose to follow him. Some of them might have been willing to follow Jesus and learn from him as long as the cost wasn't too high. They were in a light, casual forward. And so Jesus switches to an illustration about planning build a tower and counting the cost before we do so, or a king preparing to wage war against an enemy, but first reckoning on the strength of his troops before committing himself. It seems the sayings of Jesus are deliberately paradoxical, and the comparison certainly cannot be pressed, because actually it would never be reasonable to sit down and decide not to follow Jesus. No, every same person 
reason the professor should want to be his disciple and should be very happy to pay the price to follow Jesus with joy and gratitude. We cannot imagine someone determined to turn back from following Jesus. Thus, a would-be disciple of Jesus must reckon the cost, count the cost before committing oneself to a life of discipleship. A blind commitment that expects only benefits is of no use to Jesus. He wants disciples who are committed and prepared to live sacrificially for him. Jesus wasn't really impressed by large crowds. He wasn't impressed on this occasion. He wasn't impressed on Palm Sunday. It is easy to be part of the crowd when things are going on well. But the test of a true disciple is how one responds in tough times and whether one can obey God even when the cost to discipleship is very high. My brothers and sisters, especially some of us who are Jesuit, I think this gospel is really very familiar to us as it reminds us of some issues that we encounter, especially when reading chapter 3 of the general examen of our constitution. Much of the teaching, if you remember or to, read, to just uh, jiggle your mind, uh, talks a lot about renunciation. For example, it moves from the renunciation of temporal goods through the renunciation of family ties to the renunciation of even self. It begins with what we call external and impersonal motives, then moves to the intimate area of personal relationship and ends with the most difficult renunciation of all, that is the, the renunciation of self. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the one whom we celebrate this solemnity today, had learned much about renunciation during the years that he was undergoing his, con his convention. In his development, he had abandoned the excesses of his stay at Manresa in line with his changing motivation. Yet he knew that renunciation was central to Christian living and he wants the candidate to seek in our Lord his greater abnegation and continued modification in all things possible. But the stress indeed is on interior modification or abnegation, a renunciation that becomes even more spiritual. Its purpose is the inner freedom of the apostle to give himself totally to the mission. St. Ignatius always looks for great desires, magnanimity and resolve, and he trusts that in the ensuing process this will even take deeper root and become even greater. Of course, fathers Elias and Terry whose final vows who we witnessed this evening at a, at a very different stage of their journey from that of a candidate seeking to enter the society of Jesus. They are much more experienced in the ways of the spirit and indeed in the ways of the world. Perhaps, therefore, the difference in the way Elias and Terry are hearing this gospel today reflects especially the difference between the kingdom exercise for those of us who are familiar with the exercises and the third week. They are no longer the young men as you can see even from the white hair that they, they, they have. They are no longer the young men who are eager to follow Christ just in bringing the good news to all the people. Perhaps that was their mindset when they had started their formation as Jesuits. But after completing the many years in Jesuit formation, being ordained Jesuit priest, later on being invited into the final stage of their formation called stationship, Elias and Terry have a long and profound experience of both what it means to truly follow Christ. In a way, what Elias and Terry find themselves invited to be is simply to become one with Christ, who lives his pastoral mystery, who was handed over freely out of love. 
this is indeed a grace of the third week. As you pronounce your final vows today, Terry, in some mystical, and Elias, in some mystical way, the gospel passage, I think, is inviting you to share in St. Ignatius's grace of last daughter. For this reason, always remember St. Ignatius' vision along the way near Rome in that small chapel that was dedicated to Our Lady, where he saw God the Father together with Jesus who was carrying the cross. Both Father and the Son were looking most kindly on him, and he heard the Father say to the Son, I wish you to take this man as your servant. Jesus then directed his words to the kneeling pilgrim and said, I wish you to be my servant. Then he heard the Father add, I will be propitious to you in Rome. Whether this promise, you know, meant success or persecution, Ignatius, we know, wasn't sure. But it was so clear to him that he had been blessed with the Son that no matter what happened afterwards, he would never doubt that his prayer had been answered. At last daughter, St. Ignatius was being received by Jesus. This was not the Jesus of the Nativity, not the Jesus of the hidden life, nor the Jesus of the resurrection. Rather, Ignatius was there alongside Jesus who was carrying his cross. You know, this became what might say Ignatius' poor experience, one to which he constantly referred. The rest of his life, he lived it out. The decisions he took, lived it out. And the society he founded was to live it out. This experience of last daughter is also significant for you, Elias and Terry, as you knew in a short while to pronounce your final vows. In St. Ignatius, you too will be given by God the Father to Christ bearing his cross as his servants and companions. Jesus carrying the cross will tell you, take you into his company and that makes you companions of his, companions of each other, friends in the Lord together alongside Jesus carrying his cross. The desire to live alongside Jesus carrying his cross will set you free to make your specific judged contribution to the church. It will set you free to go where the need is greatest, to the frontiers, to those places where often no one else would go or would go, and when necessary, to accept the suffering that this involves. As you pronounce your final vows, it is not only you, Elias, and Terry making your offerings of self. It is also the society of Jesus offering you for the service in the church and the world under the banner of the cross. Terry and Elias, as you make your final vows today, you will commit yourself to live a life of consecrated chastity, poverty, and obedience as formed members of a body that was founded chiefly to help souls. That is a body whose end is a mission. For this reason, always remember that the society is not simply an organization to which today you will be incorporated, but a companionship, a network of friends in the Lord with whom you will live and follow Christ. Invitation to carry your cross daily as you follow him in love on the mission until death. Hence, final vows are in a sense instrumental. The final vows along with the simple vows you make secretly this evening I am a manifestation of that availability to live out more fruitfully your calling to mission. For this reason, from this day forward, it should be difficult to separate your Jesuit religious life from your commitment to the mission, any more than it will be difficult to separate your prayer life from that same commitment. In the Jesuit system, one does not ask or apply to make final vows. One just waits for the invitation to come. Elias and Terry, today it is the society of Jesus who has taken notice of your Jesuit life 
in one sense, the final vows represent the Society of Jesus' commitment to you. Now the Society of Jesus is accepting that offer you made many years ago as Jesuit novices. Just to the guidance of everyone, especially the family and lay friends of fathers Elias and Terry, we Jesuit take two different kind of vows. They are the first vows and the final vows. Elias and Terry made their first vows of chastity, poverty and obedience 19 and 25 years ago respectively. And for, uh, for, for, for them, the vows of chastity, poverty and obedience are the same. They are perpetual. But all those many years, Elias and Terry made a promise that they will enter that same society to lead their entire lives in it, understanding all things according to the Constitution, begging God that as he gave them the grace to make those vows, God might also give them enough grace to sustain them. But then, from the side of the society, those first vows needed further confirmation. If indeed the Jesuit, in this case, Terry and Elias are for the society, and if the society is for them. It is only now that those first vows that they made many years ago are being confirmed more formally. Thus today, as Father Elias and Terry pronounce their final vows, the entire universal society, with all of us, about 16,000 Jesuits all over the world, we declare to them and the world. Yes, Elias and Terry, today we confirm you as our companion and, and we confirm also our friendship with you in the Lord, in this, this society of Jesus. A better way to, the, to say this is, at first vows, you accepted the society. At final vows, the society accepts you for better or worse. In another sense, the final vows indeed signify a point of arrival and at the same time a point of departure in your Jesuit life. When Elias and Terry pronounce their final vows towards the end of this Mass, they will become fully professed fathers marking their full incorporation in the Society of Jesus and concluding their formal process of formation. For Elias and Terry, this means that all those years of descending and thinking and wondering and struggling and rejoicing about being Jesuits have been confirmed. And not just confirmed by their prayers and experiences, but by the Society of Jesus. When Elias and Terry completed their attestionship last year, they must have thought it would take some more years before they would be invited to make their final vows. And yet, this moment has come. In this world, there are only a few things that you can be sure of. Elias and Terry, after these many years of being Jesuits and confirmation from the society of Jesus, you can now be sure of your vocation. To the society of Jesus. And as God has given you the grace of your particular vocation, may God also give you the grace to fulfill it. Final vows, after all, are about you becoming the society of Jesus. For all these years, the society of Jesus has nourished and nurtured you. Now, the society is calling you to assume full responsibility to nature and nourish it, wherever, however you may be called upon to do so. I hope the two of you, as you make your final vows today, will find consolation in your final vows and the mission in the society of Jesus. As this evening we all gather to give thanks to God for the gift of St. Ignatius to the church, we pray for you both as you pronounce your final vows, that the spirit of St. Ignatius might be alive in you. We pray that you might want nothing more than to be blessed with the Son carrying his cross and so truly 
be companions of Jesus in your service to the church and of all God's good people today. We also pray that by pronouncing your final vows, you may feel like St. Ignatius felt that the Father has indeed blessed you with the Son. We pray for you that from this day forward, may it be so clear to you that you have been blessed with the Son, that no matter what happens from this day forward, you will never, you should never doubt that you are now for keeps in the society of Jesus. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, let us turn to the Lord and present our needs, our desires, our fears, and our hopes. Praying thanksgiving to God, our Creator, for granting us the gift of St. Ignatius, a man who zealously and generously committed his life to saving the Church, and through his conversion, helped bring about the foundation of the Society of Jesus. In thanksgiving to the Lord, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for our companions, Father Elias and Father Terry, who later during these Eucharistic celebrations will make their final commitment to the Lord to follow him as poor, obedient, and chaste servants in his kingdom. The Lord will grant them the blessings and the graces that they need to remain faithful to this calling and to save the Lord wholeheartedly. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. And what else shall we pray for? Father, we thank you for Father Elias and Father Cherry but also for the young men here who are leading us in the singing, that as they witness the final vows of the true brothers, that they be encouraged on their journey of faith, of hope and love, to serve God and God's people in the society of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We bring all our prayers, those spoken aloud, and those that remain in our hearts before our Blessed Virgin Mary and ask her to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Oh, 
dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the fount of all kindness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Pray to the Lord, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the discipline of St. Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts. And you move us to conform our life to Christ, that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue, through him, O Father of mercy. We are preordained by you that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore, now and for all ages and ending with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Alec our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Of Mason Nassau, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, with, the, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, including Saint Ignatius, who are pleased with all the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done for all the same word, and I so shall be. I, Francis Terry Mwandom Tesha, make my profession, and I promise to Almighty God in the presence of God's Virgin Mother, the whole heavenly court, and all those here present, and to you, Reverend Father Provincial, Lena Chiti, representing the Superior General of the Society of Jesus and his successors, and holding the place of God, perpetual poverty, chastity, and obedience in conformity with it, special care for instruction of children according to the manner of living contained in the apostolic letters of the Society of Jesus and its constitutions. I further promise a special obedience to the sovereign pontiff in regard to its constitutions according to the same apostolic letters and the constitutions. Lusaka, in the church of Unza Chapel, 31st July, 2020. I, Elias Jimonia, make my profession and I promise to the Almighty God in the presence of God's Virgin Mother the whole heavenly court, and all those here present, and to you, Reverend Father Lena Chiti, provincial, representing the Superior General of the Society of Jesus and his successors, and holding the place of God, perpetual poverty, chastity and obedience, and in conformity with it, special care for the instruction of children according to the manner of living contained in the apostolic letters of the Society of Jesus and its constitutions. I further promise 
a special obedience to the sovereign pontiff in regard to the missions, according to the same apostolic letters and the constitutions. At Wunza Chapel, Lusaka, Zambia, on 31st July 2020.
May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of St. Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before we receive the final blessing, Father Vincent Mulinga referred to a process that those young men have to go through before they are, find, they are admitted into the Society of Jesus to begin with. They are asked whether they are ready to leave everything behind, if they had any possessions, and stuff like that. In our midst tonight, we do have a group of young men that tomorrow will begin officially their journey into the Society of Jesus. They begin their life as novices. Uh, they're seated at the back to my right, so I'll just ask them to stand so that you have sight of them. So, before we receive more notices, um, the two men who made their final profession just a while ago who would have to promise a few more things. So, we invite them to come forward and make some promises. I, Francis Terry Mwandom Tesha, a professed member of the Society of Jesus, in the presence of God's Virgin Mother and the entire heavenly court, and of you, Reverend Father Provincial Lena Chiti, representing the Spirit General, promise Almighty God that I will never act in any way at all to bring about a change in the things which are ordained in the constitutions of the society relative to poverty or agree to such a change unless for a just reason arising from the ex ex exigence of things poverty would seem to need to be made more strict. In addition, I promise that I will never strive or ambition, not every indirectly, to be chosen or promoted to, to pluralness or dignity in the society. I also promise that I will never strive or ambition any pluralness or dignity outside the society. And I will, to the best of my ability, never consent to my election, unless I'm forced to do so by obedience to him who can order me under penalty of sin. Moreover, if I shall find out that anyone is seeking to secure anything of the two aforementioned things or is ambitioning them, I promise that I'll communicate his name and the entire matter to the society or its superior. In addition, I promise that if, despite the third vow, I, sh I should happen to be ordained a bishop, I shall not refuse to listen to the general of the society. If he, personally or through someone else of the society, would do me the favor of giving me some counsel. Lusaka, Unza Chapel, on 31st of July, 2020. <clears throat>
I, Elias Nchimonya, a professed member of the Society of Jesus. In the presence of God's Virgin Mother and the entire heavenly court, and of you, Reverend Father Leonard Chiti, provincial, representing the Superior General, promise Almighty God that I will never act in any way at all to bring about a change in the things which are ordained in the constitutions of the society, of G of the society relative to poverty or agree to such a change unless for a just reason arising from the exigence of things poverty would seem to be made more strict. In addition, I promise that I will never strive or ambition, not even indirectly, to be chosen or promoted to any prelates or dignity in the society. I also promise that I will never strive for or ambition and prelates or dignity outside the society. And I will, to the best of my ability, never consent to my election unless I'm forced to do so by obedience to, who, to him who can order me under penalty of sin. Moreover, if I shall found, find out that anyone is seeking to secure anything of the two aforementioned things or is ambitioning them, I promise that I will communicate his name and the entire matter to the society or its superior. In addition, I promise that if despite the third vow, I should happen to be ordained a bishop, I shall not refuse to listen to the general of the society. If he personally or through someone else of the society would do me the favor of giving me some counsel. At Wunza Chapel, Lusaka, Zambia, on 31st July, 2020. change anything related to poverty except to make it stricter and they will not ambition for any high position not even to become a bishop and we are witnesses to that.
Father Patrick Muleli has got some announcements to make. Good evening, everyone. Just a few things. Um, to the guests of Terry and uh, Elias, um, they have told me to invite you to our community, to the Jesuit residence on Senanga Road, at number 53, Senanga Road. Um, if you don't know where the place is, follow somebody who knows where the place is. We'll show you where uh, it's. You know, just along the road, uh, Tsenanga Road, you'll find number 53. Uh, that's where the, the guests of Terry and Elias have been invited to come and share a little time, a little social time with us. And for those that are driving, uh, there won't be enough parking space at number 53, uh, so please park at number 51. Uh, the property just before 53. Uh, there will be enough parking space at number 51 in case there isn't enough parking space at number 53. So thank you very much for joining us at this Eucharist and congratulations to Fathers Terry and Elias. Welcome to the society. <laughs> The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended, let us go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.